Leite é básico. Que fino. Ele disse assim. Público. Thank you to a remote audience. Somewhere. I don't, I don't even know where they're at, but they're somewhere. En algún lugar está nuestra audiencia. <laughs> Beatlemania XL, guys. Bienvenidos nuevamente a Beatlemania XL. Somos the Jukebox Beatles. Todos los martes nos reunimos a hablar de los Beatles, a decir las cosas que están pasando en el mundo de los Beatles, lo que sabemos y lo que no sabemos también. Yeah, thank you. If this is your first time, <laughs> if this is your first time watching the show, we're at the Jukebox Beatles. We're a Beatles tribute band from Puerto Rico. Every Tuesday we get together, we talk about the Beatles, we play the Beatles music, and we have a lot of fun. So thank you all for watching us on Facebook, están en YouTube, están en Instagram, están en la plataforma de Roku. Thank you very much for your support. And uh, guys, welcome back. Bienvenido nuevamente a otra edición de Beatlemania XL. Sí. Yeah. Gracias a todo el mundo que está sintonizando por siempre estar pendiente del show de nosotros todos los martes, por escribirnos siempre en, lo, en, lo, en los comments, estamos bien emocionados de estar aquí como siempre y pues les exhortamos que busquen la página de X Level y nos sintonicen directamente en la página de X Level para que se vea me, mejor y, y que también puedan disfrutar de la programación que ellos siempre tienen, películas y cosas bien chéveres, además de este gran programa de los Beatles que es nuestro tema favorito. <risa> <risa> yes. Francisquillo, ¿cómo está? Próximo, el próximo. Bien, bien. <risa> Saludos a todo el mundo, gracias por sintonizar. Uh, thank everybody for uh, tuning in. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here every Tuesday uh, talking about what we love, the Beatles. <risa> yeah. All yeah, right, gracias, Francisco. A, gracias a todos los que están regresando al show, los que son nuevos, los que hace tiempo no volvían. El último show, creo que rompimos récord de todos los números, ¿verdad? Así que oh, yeah. vamos a seguir yes, rompiendo yeah. números por ahí. Así que we love you, Thank, gracias a todos. And, le, and let's get our Beatles on. Yeah, let's yes. And like the Beatles. Así mismo, así mismo, eh. Guys, todavía. Yeah. Tío, oye, 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 el público está confiado. El público oh, yeah. está súper confiado. Sí, este público remoto está, o sea gritando, oye, de todas partes del mundo. Yeah, un saludito a Fisu, Mr. F, que siempre está dirigiendo técnicamente el show. Mr. F, we can't see you, but, you know, un saludo bien especial. Te podemos escuchar siempre. Bueno, lo próximo. Guys, estamos todavía, we're still on the lockdown in Puerto Rico, even though it's getting a bit flexible, you know, we get, you know, some people get to work, some people get to go out and do stuff. But we're still going on, man. We're still here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we had a lockdown. I'm staying we, home we... as much as I can. I am keeping a safe distance as much as I can. I'm washing my hands as much as I can, covering my cough. Uh, but you know, quarantine is is, is 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 is. I like quarantine except for the coronavirus. You know, <laughs> I've been staying home, <laughs> working from home. What else? What the hell's that, man? <laughs> coronavirus sucks. <laughs> What you're saying yeah, is you yeah. don't mind you don't mind being home. You like being at your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this so my quarantine has been pretty good except for the coronavirus. Being scared of the coronavirus, not being able to hug my family, uh, stuff like that. Th those things suck. Yeah, that's the worst but part. But anyway. Of, and of course not being able to play. That sucks. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's the worst. Uh, yeah. Although that's we, what we I miss, man. Worse. I we miss the live shows. Two months. We have that's to right, that's right. take turns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I miss going right. out, get, getting yeah, out man. of my house. <laughs> well, we got, but, but, but uh, we got together over the weekend, right? Oh yes, we did. We did get together. We did get together. Tuvimos grabando una. 
es, es como una presentación slash especial para Abbey Road on the River. Vamos a tener un, ya que el festival se canceló en Estados Unidos, no podemos ir, pero vamos a enviar nuestra presentación en vivo, pregrabada. Yeah. Yeah. Exactamente. Vamos a hacer, es, hicimos un live pregrabado. Tú sabes que con el coronavirus, pues todo el mundo está tirando los famosos lives. Pues entonces, pues el festival Abbey Road on the River va a estar tirando su versión de, pues, ¿cómo le dicen ellos? Ellos le dicen el, el technological este, musical, qué sé yo qué. Virtual. Así, exactamente. Virtual. Exacto, virtual, exacto, virtual concert. Y así vamos a estar nosotros. Estuvimos este último domingo en Rincón. Yo no veía la playa hace dos meses y fue de verdad un respiro. Estaba allí de nuevo. Ese aire que se respira en ese pueblo es diferente, es como más fresco. Y estuvo brutal, este, con los muchachos, compartimos, este, tocamos con nuestra guitarra, lo, we played loud rock and roll, and it was kind of restorative for me, you know? Yeah, it, it was a great yeah. time, and we, you know, we ended up late, and we had to defy the lockdown <laughs> to get back home. <laughs> yes. But, you know, we, we managed to, to get home without getting any tickets or, you know, arrested. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not rock and roll if, if we're not breaking rules. So, yeah. so we gotta break the rules, man. Oh, you're such a bad bueno, boy. Alejandro. Es como la, eso es como la canción de Peter Frampton, Breaking All the Rules. Breaking All the Rules. No, man, pero está bien, está bueno. Así que este sábado lo vamos a transmitir a través de la página de nosotros, Jukebox Beatles, en Facebook. So we're gonna, you know, we're gonna broadcast it on Saturday. So stay tuned for the hour. Because I'm, you know, we're not sure what time we, we're going on, but you know, I know, I know for sure it's on Saturday. So yeah, yeah, just stay tuned. Check on, you know, check on our Facebook page, and uh, you know, just look for the updates. We'll keep you updated about everything. Splendid and time, guys. guaranteed for all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. People have asked us, you know, to play me. Oh, tenemos WhatsApp. If you have WhatsApp, you can give us a call or you can leave a message. Vean a ver el numerito nuevamente. 1-787-269-3367. If you want to leave us a message, you know, if you, I, don't, I don't know if we can take the call on the air, but uh, nos llaman, nos dan su mensaje. 1-787-269-3367 para que nos den su mensaje y se comunique con nosotros aquí en Beatlemania Excel. We would love to hear from you. And we would love, you know, for you guys to tell us how you're doing on this Corona thing, you know. Or you can give us a call live, 787-269-3367. You know, we're going to talk about Beatles, so we want you to be a part of it. Nosotros queremos que ustedes sean parte también de esta comunicación que vamos a tener, esta conversación que vamos a tener acerca de los Beatles y todas las cosas buenas que pasan, que están pasando ahora mismo. Guys, vamos a poner un poquito de música So uh, people that ask us to play, we cannot play live, but uh, we have some pre-recorded uh, videos that we're going to show you from prior episodes. Así que, Fisa, whenever you get a chance, whenever you get a chance, give us some music, man. Is on fire. <laughs> yeah. Having a great time, man. Yeah, day trip. Oye, ¿cómo se puede traducir day tripper en español? Viajero diario. Yeah, o viajero de día. Yeah, ¿Cómo, trip, pero... ¿Cómo sería la traducción, verdad? Como tripeador diario. Viajero de día. Viajero diurno. Eso mismo. Eso mismo. Yeah, mucho. Yeah. O día tripioso. Tiene... Exacto, día triple. <laughs> Guys, we have a we have a, a very sad news, man. Uh -oh. Astrid Kircher, la amiga de los Beatles. Uh -oh. Amiga de los Beatles desde que ellos comenzaron 
tocando allá en, en, en Alemania, que era una banda, you know, when they started out as a hungry, you know, amateur band, basically, the Beatles in Hamburg, Germany, they met Astrid Kirchner, Kitcher, and uh, she just passed away, man, a couple of, couple of days ago, probably last week, uh, you know? That's oh, so sad, sad man. It's, it's pretty sad, and then she was a very key in the early... Uh, image of the Beatles, ella era una fotógrafa, ella fue clave en la historia de la música de los Beatles, especialmente en esa etapa de cuando ellos estaban comenzando en Alemania. Ella los conocía a ellos y, mano, una cosa, ¿sabes? Tiró muchas imágenes clásicas de los Beatles que todo el mundo, pues, que, 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 que de otra manera no se hubiese conocido a esa época de los Beatles. Murió hace poco y es una gran amiga de los Beatles. Es verdad, es verdad, este, es muy triste, pues. So, este, conocer, este, knowing that she has passed away, Astrid Kircher, she's very important in the Beatles history because she took the first professional pictures of the Beatles. And those pictures are, are now iconic, you know, pictures playing, pictures where they were hanging out, very cool pictures. And she, and when I say professional, it's because she had a, she had a tripod, you know, she had a professional camera. She had all these great ideas about about how to put the guys to pose. You know that was her, and it was a very interesting uh, a very interesting story because she when she met them she didn't know much English. So all those pictures uh, when they are like on top of a car, they are like in a train. That picture that's one of the pictures John Lennon that she took. She couldn't talk much with them, so she was she would touch them literally and. and and put their head in a certain way and put their posture in a certain way and and the pictures look very special and when she met them she she asked them if she could take photographs and they said yes and they took those pictures the next day when they yeah, are in algo, the train algo, algo curioso Ale, es que Astrid she was Stuart Sutcliffe's uh, girlfriend Stuart uh -huh. fue el bajista original de los Beatles and they you know they met and they instantly fell in love. Exactly. And before that, she was um, the other guy's girlfriend. What was his, what was his name? Klaus, Klaus Vorman. Vorman. Yes. Vorman. She was Klaus Vorman's girlfriend. Uh, and Klaus Vorman took her to meet the Beatles. And they, they ended up, um, and they are still friends. They were always friends. And she ended up with with, with that guy. Um, I forgot his Stewart. name suddenly. Stuart. 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 And she said that in, in intelligence, in art, in artistry, he was miles ahead from the other Beatles. So imagine that Stuart died at 21. He was only interested in being a painter. And John could see the artistry in him and wanted to him to be in the band. And, and she said that Paul would say, hey, he cannot play. And he said, fuck it, he's rock and roll. He looks great. <laughs> like, oh. yeah. That's and true, she that's take, true. Mm -hmm. And also the mop top haircut. Stuart was the first one to have the mop top haircut from the Beatles because Astrid uh, would cut the hair that certain way. She knew how to do the haircut. She did it on Klaus Vorman before because she said Klaus Vorman had huge ears. And she did that haircut <laughs> to cover his ears. <laughs> sí, sí, sí. Oye, es, es curioso porque eh, ella es prácticamente la que, la que crea ese estilo, ese estilo de, de recorte que era bastante común en los... Este, que era bastante común en los... En los jóvenes de aquella época, pero ella le hizo el recorte a Stuart. Y Stuart, una vez que Stuart lo, lo tiene, todos los demás dicen, al, al principio se burlaron. Y, ah, mira para allá, qué ridículo con ese pelito así. Ah, ah, ah. You know, they made fun of him, you know, at the very beginning. But then George Harrison was like, oh, you know, I'm going to get my hair like that. And then, you know, he got it and then the other two joined in. So she was, she, she was the creator of the Beatle haircut. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. She was very important. Thanks to her, we can travel to time and see the Beatles in that moment. You know, and there is a, my favorite picture of her. She says that her, her favorite pictures, but my favorite pictures that she took as well are those when John George in the attic and in the background oh, it's all yeah. black. And yeah, Stuart had just yeah. died. Stuart had just, mm -hmm. had just died. And she could capture that sadness in John Lennon. And she said that 
his look was so sad, and and then George was with him in like, kind of giving him strength. And it's and yeah, yeah. to me it's very emotional to see that picture, to see that friendship so long ago in their uh, so early in the career. That's one of the pictures that she took in the truck. So she was very artistic and very important, and they loved her. They were always with her till the till the end of time, you know. Yeah, that's that's another you know that's that's the original lineup of the Beatles. You know, not many people know that the Beatles were not four, were five people at the beginning. You know, and they had you know the drummer uh, Pete Best was the original drummer before Ringo, and the bass player was Stewart. It wasn't Paul McCartney because Paul, John, and George mm -hmm. all three played guitar. Ellos tres eran guitarristas y estaba un baterista original que se llama Pete Best. Y estaba Stuart, que era el que tocaba este, el bajo, que no era, un, no era un gran músico, pero era amigo de John Lennon. Y John Lennon es el tipo de persona de que si tú le caes bien, pues no importa que tú no toques música. Ven y o sea, sé parte de la banda, eso no importa. Este, y tuvieron una amistad bien, bien cercana John Lennon y, y Stuart. Exactamente. Y ella escogió, en una entrevista vi que ella escogió esa localización para tirar esas fotos, que se ve ese tren como viejo y esos carros, porque se ve como grubby, su palabra. Entonces el grupo estaba tratando en ese momento de, de dar una imagen de grubbiness, como de tipo así, malotes, qué sé yo. Y entonces, pues mira ahí como ella acomoda a los Beatles por primera vez, su imagen dentro de una localización que va con esa imagen. Y todo eso encaja de como para hacer una prosodia artística y ahí los Beatles son uno, unos nenes y entonces están haciendo esa, esa arte porque la fotografía es un arte y esas fotografías esas fotos que ella tiró son bien buenas este desde el, desde el punto de vista de, de artístico de, de la fotografía yeah, yeah. And, it, and, it, and it does capture you know take a look at this picture you know this is mm -hmm. the idea that were later copied on the Beatles uh, with the Beatles album Beatles. You know, when they appear, all four of them, you know, with their faces, uh, half of it dark and the other lit, you know, uh, it, it was taken, inspired by the pictures that uh, Astrid took of the Beatles. So, so you know, it, you know, it was, it was a lot of, uh, of artistic expression at the time. Uh, and it's so, it's in a way, it's magical because, I mean, these this were kids. You know, they only had 20, 21, 21 years old. You know, basically they were kids. And, you know, they had so much creativity and so much uh, artistry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to show you the picture, Ali. You mentioned that this this set of pictures was taken a couple of days after uh, Stewart died. You know, the Beatles showed yeah. up in Germany to play the clubs. And they found out that their best friend died a couple of days, you know, before. Wow. Exactly, and that post that John is doing there is a picture that she took from Stuart because that room was Stuart's studio where he painted. So John could feel that energy of Stuart in that room. And that's the picture that John is looks so sad. And, and, and George is behind him putting his hand on his shoulder, like giving him strength and like being there as a friend. And, she, and, and the black background to me also like represents the mood like black like you know people when people die and they dressed in black and all this black and that is very artistic right there and she took those famous pictures for posterity we have them for posterity thanks to her and because she could see in the Beatles that great personality and charisma that they had yeah. and she just yeah. Yeah. hanged around forever She said that it It's changed great. her life meeting them. The only thing that she wanted to do was to know them and to be with them. Yeah, and it, and it made her famous. The Beatles, the Beatles changed her life and she changed the Beatles' life. And in the process, she ch she changed all of our lives. You know, the whole world, basically. You know, uh, incredible, man. So let's, let's play a video of a song that we did that the Beatles used to cover at that time, you know, when they first met. You know, when the Beatles met, you know, Klaus Bormann, Astrid, uh, Jurgen, you know, a bunch of, of, of German guys that were very uh, uh, importante en la historia de los Beatles. Que fue una influencia mm -hmm. bien grande. Así que, Fisa, whenever you get a chance, play this video. And, uh, yeah, let's do a bit of rock and roll. Rock right. and rollness. <laughs> One, two. 
Be. <laughs> oh man, what a great song! And, and, it, and it was just one of the songs that the Beatles used to play when they met Astrid and they made, you know, they met uh, Jurgen and uh, Klaus Bormann. Man, what a, what a great time! What a great time! So yeah, uh, speaking of that time, uh, there was a movie made in 1994. It's called Backbeat. It was an Anglo-German uh, production. It basically basically tells the story of when Stu uh, and John and the rest of the Beatles met uh, Astrid and that period in Germany. It's basically Stu Sutcliffe's story and the relationship between John Stewart and, uh, and Astrid. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, The, the guys are really good at it, the actors they show. Uh, some of them even played the Beatles more than once. Uh, the, the guy who plays John Lennon, Ian Hart, had been a play called uh, The Hours and the Times. The guy who played Paul, who was really good. Uh, he also played Paul in the Linda McCartney story. Uh, the guy who played Pete Best also played Pete Best in the, in the John Lennon in My Life, a movie from 2000. Uh, It captures that period, you know, especially from, from when John Lennon, Stuart Sutcliffe won an, an, an art prize and he got some money. And John went, you know what? You could buy a base with that money. And that's, yeah. that's how Stuart, uh, he didn't, and Stuart didn't know anything about music. So that's how <laughs> he got in because, you know, John needed a bass player for his band. So he was like, you know, that's the same amount for a Hofner bass. Yeah, John yeah, was yeah. Uh, like like the little devil on your you know on your shoulder. <laughs> buy a base, buy a base, buy a base. <laughs> hey, buy a base. So, Forget about paints. <laughs> so it, it's it's a very good movie and uh, for Beatles fans and the music uh, captures. You know they they went for some alternative uh, superstars. Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters was there. Dave Finner from Sound Asylum, and they play. The, the music is all covers. I mean, there's no Beatles music in the, in the movie because they didn't really play original music at that time. Uh, and it's very, it's very punkish, which I think it's kind of accurate for the way they played at that time. So I, I, I highly recommend it. If you're a Beatles fan, I think it does a good job. Um, Astrid said it was very accurate in capturing um, uh, the relationship with the Heras too. Paul McCartney really liked the Stuart Sutcliffe portrayal. Uh, he didn't like that it kind of appears for a second that John Lennon is singing Long Tall Sally, and they kind of took that away from him. <laughs> uh, but, but license. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's just for a second. He's actually John singing, but yeah, it looks for a second like it's John singing, and he gets mad about it because, you know, John never sang that song. He yeah. sang other Little, Little Richard songs, but not that one. But, you know, it's a, it's a minor annoyance, but it, it's, it's a good movie. Cool, mano, sí, sí. A mí me gusta, uh, me gusta right. mucho el, el, el soundtrack, estaba súper bueno, mano, y, y encuentro que, que los artistas, los actores que hicieron el portrait de los Beatles, este, mano, lo hicieron muy bien, ¿sabes? me yeah, gustó yeah. mucho. Ah, y la escena, me gusta la escena cuando, esto es un spoiler, si, por acaso, si acaso no la han visto, <risa> este, que aparece un tipo durmiendo así en, y alguien entra, no, no recuerdo quién fue, entra y dice, ¿Quién es eso? Oh, eso that's, es that's Ringo. Yo por ese Ringo durmiendo así, qué sé yo qué. Oh. <laughs> Porque, because Ringo, and even though Ringo was not in the band, he used to play in another band called Road Storm and the Hurricanes, which was mm -hmm. also, you know, one of the bands that used to play, you know, in the clubs in Hamburg. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, they, I mean, they were all tied up together somehow, you know, all the Beatles, all the, the cast, you know, all the characters, you know, they were all tied up somehow. And it, you know, it works incredibly in the end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Astrid uh, said that the guy that played uh, Stuart gave her uh, goosebumps. That he was so good at doing uh, Stuart that he gave her goosebumps. So, yeah. so he was actually pretty accurate, you know. And uh, 
And uh, speaking about quotes from Astrid, uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, she actually once said, uh, I believe that uh, my biggest contribution to the Beatles was my friendship. And I think that's mm -hmm. actually beautiful, man. Just to say something like that uh, shows how how beautiful she is how uh you know how how a uh, beautiful soul that she has and 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 not only the you know not only the connection about what's uh, was a uh, steward with the beatles was her her friendship and 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 giving her uh giving them their their friendship uh and right after uh, uh steward passed away uh astrid uh stayed friends with the with with the whole band Uh, they got re reunited, you know, especially with John and George. Uh, you know, I, I think it was '63 when John got married, right, with uh, with Cynthia. Uh, so, in the honeymoon, they got together. Y se vieron en el honeymoon de, de John Lennon. Eh, George también hangueaba con, con Astrid. Este, después luego, este, Astrid en el '64 pasa a hacer una de, la, de, de las grabaciones de Hard Day's Night. Ella está en la producción y en la grabación de Hard Day's Night, which is actually pretty big, de estar tirándole fotos a, en, un, en, en, en un parque de trenes a, a some guys, a estar haciendo la película de Hard Day's Night ahí, haciendo la producción. You know, it's actually a big step up. Este, luego después, en el 66, se encuentran otra vez con los Beatles cuando ellas están en el tour de Alemania. Eh, she's actually pretty nice y también se encuentran en ese tiempo que es actually pretty nice to know you know that after all you know after all the, the tragic and you know and the and, and rough times they still remain friends and it's actually pretty beautiful hasta, hasta después que, que yo, yo creo que no sé en qué año fue que George suelta el álbum de Wonderwall ella también sí, eh, sí. participa en la portada de Wonder World, which is... 68, you know, 68, 68. 1968. And yeah, she, I think she designed the cover, right? Yeah, yeah, she did, she did. So actually, y es, una, y es, y es medio, medio un wild cover, so ella sigue todavía ahí <laughs> tratando de romper esas barreras de arte, you know, como que trying to do that new age uh, uh, hippie feel, you know. So, para mí ella yo creo que es una pionera ahí en, 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 la, en los Beatles. Yeah. Eso también es el, so cool. el disco de Rock and Roll de Don Lennon de, de 75 <risa> eh, es una foto de que Astrid tomó en los años late 50s, early 60s allá en Alemania. Yeah. That, is, that is so cool But, that, you know, they... they... They stayed friends, you know, even though the Beatles were popular, they were were incredibly famous. They were on, on top of the world. They never forgot, you know, where, where they came from, you know, and all the friends that they made, you know, it's, it's beautiful. And she beautiful. said that that they always wrote to her and most of those letters she threw away because she didn't think it would be historical documents at some point. <laughs> and she yeah, said, especially yeah, George. Wrote, wrote to her a lot. She had a lot of, of John of George's. And, yeah, she's, you know? and she also she also threw away a lot of the negatives of the pictures that she took. Oh, because wow. mm -mm. you know, ella ella los regaló o los botaba los negativos de las fotos que ella tomó porque ella no pensaba de que los Beatles iban a ser, tú sabes, lo que fueron. So para ella para ella eran pues sus amigos. Ah, mira, son los amigos míos les sacó una foto. So she, you know, she never, you know, gave importance to that fame thing. It was, for her, it was, you know, friends. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like this picture, you know, this is George Harrison in the 70s. And they were still, you know, together and, you know, sharing memories and sharing special moments. Yeah. Yo creo que eso era clave de... Yeah, she looked very close to George. Yo creo que eso era clave para tú poder ser como que janguear con los Beatles. Tenías que ser friend, no un fan. Y ella como que sí, actuaba sí, como sí. un friend and she was the friend, so she remained a friend and that's actually pretty beautiful. Ver que una de relación yeah, yeah. empieza ahí y continúa for decades. Sí, yeah, and she keeps so, a lot yeah, of the Beatles secrets too. She knows a lot of stuff that she says, I, I'm never gonna say, like, I've, you know, I'm not gonna say either. <laughs> <laughs> She's not gonna air the dirty laundry. <laughs> uh -huh. Exactly. She knows. No, but she I mean, that is, the, that is, you know, 
<risa> that is, you know, that is testament of the beautiful of friendship. You know, lo mucho que, que importa la amistad y cómo uno debe valorar las personas. Este, porque, pues, sabes, siguen con uno, son parte de uno, sabes. Y, and yeah, man, that's why, I, you know, I value you guys' friendship. Oh, 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 man, oh. Me too, man. man, me yeah, voy a poner man. rojo aquí en vivo. Oh my God, that's so sweet. <laughs> that's so sweet. Yeah, okay, you can you can send me the check in the mail. <laughs> el, el emoji, el emoji es el corazoncito. Así. El emoji, el emoji. <laughs> oh, guys. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh <my> god. <laughs> Astrid. All right, Astrid, this yeah, is, you know, from us to you with all our, you know, todo nuestro amor y nuestra admiración por tu vida, por tu obra, por todo lo que simbolizaste la vida de los Beatles. So, thank you, Astrid. Thank you, Astrid. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. you are with two guys. Astrid. Yeah, finally together. Finally all right, guys. A little bit of history. Un día como hoy, this very same day, way back in 1966, the Beatles got together at Abbey Road Studios to record the video for Paperback Writer. That's There it right, is. Man. That's the image. There are two versions. Hay dos versiones del, del, del video de Paperback Writer, pero esa es la que grabaron en el estudio Abbey Road. Y también en ese mismo día grabaron la canción Rain. So si tú miras el video de Rain, And the video from uh, Paperback Writer, you know, they were shot on the same day in the same location. So that's why they, you know, they are similar. There are mm -hmm. two versions, actually two versions of the video. And uh, this is version number one. Nice. Arlie, yeah, what can you say? Well, well. Si, sí, si, sí, este, as you say, they made a promo video for these two songs. And it was a very simple kind of video. It's the Beatles in the garden kind of singing and mimicking along with the tunes, which is something that I don't think they had ever done much, like not playing live, but mimicking. And it was something new in the Beatles history that is relevant still today because it's a modality. Uh, they developed this new modality that they could get their new songs played on TV for performances and they didn't have to be physically present because at that moment they were so busy, you know. Mm -hmm. And when we think of the history of the music video, these two videos are probably, probably an important stop <laughs> along the road, around the road heading toward MTV. Things like, like the music videos that, as we know today, like MTV in the early 80s, and music groups doing promo videos, like instead of just playing for the whole time, just walking around, posing, and with some shots of the of the guys playing, but kind of a story going in cool locations, you know. And this was probably the first time that this kind of music promotion was used, you know. And it was made out of the necessity of the Beatles to stay in the recording studio. So it was like they say, a happy accident, you know? And so, yeah. so in a way, so in a way they created MTV in a way, you know, the, <laughs> exactly. the, the concept, the concept of the promo video. Pioneers, man. Yeah, <laughs> pioneers <laughs> always ahead of the pack. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And you said you, they recorded two versions of, of the, of the video, right? Yeah, Fran, Fran, tú tienes la información, ¿verdad? <laughs> Bueno, yo la información que tengo es sobre el director Michael Lindsay Hogg. Ah, la, 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 sí, 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 sí. Yeah, 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 you're right, Arle. They did record it. They did uh, two, sh two different shots. One was at Abbey Road uh, Studios and the other one, a place called Chiswick Gardens. Uh -huh. I think I pronounced it right. Chiswick Gardens, something like <laughs> Sounds that. Sounds about know. right. <laughs> which is, the, which then, is the second version. And then they did another promotion in the BBC playing and that real tape was erased because of the BBC's need to have new tapes because the real tapes are so yeah, expensive yeah. Oh, and that is yeah. lost forever. Yeah, that, was, that's... that is true. That's that's a TV show called Top of the Pops, uh, the BBC <laughs> TV. That's, I mean, this there's nowhere to be found. It's nowhere <laughs> to be fired. 
There are people uh, so... that, that recorded seconds. There's like eight seconds, some guy that re the collector's item that recorded it yeah. somehow. But that's about it. And in this video, yeah. Paul McCartney that has version a... Number two. That is, is version number two? Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, but another oh. thing I want to say about this video. <laughs> Paul McCartney yeah, has ahead, a shit tooth. Paul McCartney has a shit tooth and a, and a broken lip. <laughs> and because he had a, a like a motorcycle accident, and that uh, that kind of plays a role in the whole Paul is dead thing rumors, you know. That's Paul. That's yeah, Paul. Yeah. That's yeah. Let's not start that again. <laughs> 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 Guys, I want to say something real quick. If you haven't seen our special about the Paul is dead, look for it on YouTube on our YouTube channel. Uh, the date is October 29th. That was our Halloween special. That was Hicimos fun. show dedicado al Paul is Dead. Oh, man, it was great. <laughs> Man, <laughs> maldito animal! Yes, escape again, I'm sorry. Maldito animal! <laughs> maldito animal! Tampoco así, tampoco así. So, yeah. So, hey. so, in conclusion, one more time, the Beatles making the move from, from, from craftsmen's to artists, you know, with this idea of the music video. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah, and that's the thing, man, uh, because, you know, at the time, they couldn't be anywhere. Uh, they couldn't be everywhere. So they what they would do is, to, you know, like, uh, and beyond their sing, they, they would send out the single, but they would send out the video, you know, which is which another uh, form of promotion that was adopted by everybody, you know, after that. You know, everybody, you know, did a video to the point that today, you have to make a video otherwise you know your 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 promo efforts are not complete yeah wow. that's right yeah man right. Right. los beatles los beatles sí, comenzaron esta cuestión del, del, del video como herramienta promocional eh, de la música al punto de que hoy en día todos los artistas tienen que tener un video o sea, <laughs> para hacer que, que vaya. yeah man look at ringo how cool it is i mean he didn't play anything <laughs> on the video but he's the coolest. Look at him. He's yeah. always the coolest, man. Yeah. Always the coolest. <laughs> cool. Yeah, definitely one. Yeah. This is the precursor, if that's an English word, precursora. Yeah. Of yeah. the modern video clip. That is that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Frank, I, now you're going to say something. Yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, Michael Lindsay Hogg. Uh, he was the director of uh, these videos. Um, before that, he had worked on Ready, Steady, Go, which was like the British version of, uh, you know, the American bandstand, let's say. And the Rolling Stones had played there, and the Jarbers and the Who. So he was the one who directed uh, Paper Black Rider and Rain. Uh, he also then went on to work with the Stones. He did uh, the Rock and Roll Circus, where uh, John Lennon played with King Richards. And, and you know, uh, it was, he has a, a very good career He after, you know, he even worked with Paul McCartney after the Beatles were done with Wings, he worked with the Stones, with Whitney Houston. He directed Let It Be, uh, which was the, the Beatles' final film, um, which we're going to see a new version of sometime this year. Um, then we're going to go to, then he did the some concert films in the 80s too, he did a, uh, Simon and Garfunkel's uh, concert in Central Park, which is a very famous concert. Neil Young in Berlin. And, and also, on a very curious note, he also directed this VH1 movie, which is called Two of Us, which is a fictionalized uh, uh, version of the last time that Paul and John met. And when they when they almost uh, they spent the day together and almost decided to go to Saturday Night Live. And it's a, it's a very cool... Uh, film that they did for BH1 in, 2000, in the year cool. 2000. Yeah. yeah, man. Awesome, man. Nice. Awesome. I love... El I... hizo... Uh, perdona, Frank. I didn't hear. El hizo Rock and Roll Circus también? Yeah, he did Rock and Roll Michael Circus. Michael Lindsay Michael okay. Lindsay Hawk, yeah. He was the director, but uh, the Stones were not pleased with their performance, so it didn't see the light of day until 1996. Wow. Ah, oh, see, 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 see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Took a while. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but you know, the thing is that, you know, when the John Lennon Sonja Blues, it's killer, the Hooded Killer, and the Stones, you know, 
we're just throwing some bot sloppy, it's still cool, but, uh, <laughs> you know, the other guys so they, play maybe a little, maybe play a little better, so, you know. Yeah, so they, they, <laughs> they got, they got upstaged, they got upstaged in their own neighborhood. Exactly, <laughs> that's what happened. And I love this talk, but it's the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, man. Ali. Wow, uh, man, I love Paperback Writer y Rain. Para mí esos dos videos eh, tienen este feeling de, de como janguear con los Beatles en el set. No es un video como de, de ah, mira, mírenme, estoy aquí y estoy haciendo este pa papel. Y ellos están como que simplemente ahí, Paul está cantando, mirando por ahí, se le ve el diente roto. Y está como que mirando por ahí. Entonces Ringo está como que sentado en el piso, como que con la mano así, como si estuviera como que bored, pero está cool porque él es Ringo. Entonces tiene ese, tiene ese feeling, mano, que solamente, que solamente los Beatles pueden darle. Este, y otro, para hablar así de otros videos que me como que me dan ese feeling. Es como cuando en el video de Help, que ellos están en una filita y está John al frente, y está Paul tratando de salirse por el lado, y está George tratando de salirse por el otro lado, y está como que Ringo con la sombrilla y les cae nieve. Y es como que es, es literal verlos hanguear en un escenario donde los pusieron ahí, mira, los vamos a grabar por los dos minutos y medio que dura la canción <risa> Do Something. Y, y tiene yeah, ese feeling, mano, y tiene ese feeling como, o como We Can Work It Out, que, que, que están ese... ese ese momento de Paul y John que literal se están riendo mientras están grabando la canción y se miran, es como que loco, deja de estar haciendo estupideces y John trepaba el pie y pues se reía de él y era como que entonces eso, esos, esos momentos únicos que, que yo creo que ellos crearon eh, en estos tipos de videos tratando de promocionarse so para yeah, mí yeah, para... They, were, they, they, they wanted to put their sense of humor in the videos, you know They didn't take it that seriously, you know, so they want to showcase, you know, their humor in those videos. Mm -hmm. You know, it was mm -hmm. something very informal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yo creo que ellos siempre tenían ese factor. Sí, de, de hecho, eso, eso es una cosa que los diferenciaba a ellos de otros artistas, porque usualmente los artistas le preguntaban algo y ellos daban contestaciones bien straightforward. Este, a los Beatles, pues, les gustaba hacer chistes y eso lo, lo, lo diferenció también como, you know, uh, When are you going to get a haircut? Oh, I had one yesterday. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, yeah, and it's see. something that, that I really love about the Beatles is their sense of humor. They were, especially in the early years when they were really happy and pumped up, you know, they were <laughs> incre incredibly funny. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Larry, uh, Larry put in the, the comments that she doesn't know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, I'm, <laughs> okay. so I'm going to try to say in English for Lori. <laughs> Lori, the, my favorite thing about Paperback Writer and Rain was the unique thing that it was it had it had the feeling of hanging out with with the Beatles, not just watching them play. It was it was watching them hang in some place that they just well you know just stay there and act for two minutes, and uh, <laughs> and that was that was the thing that I I liked the most about Rain and and Paperback Writer, J just like just like help. With the snow falling and, and Ringo just holding a you know an umbrella and uh, <laughs> and we can work it out. Uh, John playing John playing piano and putting his feet on top of the uh, uh, like on top of the keys just to have fun with the guys. And that's that's the unique yeah. thing that we like about the Beatles. You know, having a uh, sense of humor in the in the in the you know the creating of media. <laughs> Yeah, man, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty well explained. <laughs> All right, Melinda wants us. Melinda wants us to sing a song. Uh, <laughs> why don't we show a video? But before, you know, in the comments below, you know, Facebook or or xlevelpr.com, give us, tell us, you know, which video of the Beatles you like. You know, what is your favorite Beatles video? Put it on the comments, you know, and we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas in May. Merry, Merry. The rock, the rock and roll weirdo. The rock, the rock and roll weirdo is back with a vengeance. Weirdo oh. uh, hero. Oh, man. Oh, God, guys. All right, guys. Oh, yeah. 
los videos de los Beatles, a mí me gusta mucho el de, el de uh, I Am The Walrus, que no fue un video promocional como tal, es parte de la película Medical Mystery Tour, but I think, you know, the, the performance of I Am The Walrus, you know, that video, that uh, scene in the uh, Magical Mystery Tour film, film, I think it's great, man, one of my favorites. El, yeah, mío, es, el mío es Twist and Shout, sencillito, ellos en el principio cantando, brutal, y, y cuando yeah. pegan el grito yo yo emociono, o sea, se me paran, se me paran los, así los goosebumps con, con ese performance de John cantando y and they just look so cool, man, so rock and roll. Yeah, man, okay. you, I mean, and if you, si tú ves la, la película Hard Day's Night, if you look at the film a Hard Day's Night, every musical segment is like a video, it's like a promo video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was, I was so, gonna say that, you know, I probably like uh, Can Buy Me Love, that segment of the yeah. When they're just jumping around and running down the stairs and whatnot, that's 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 my one. Uh, that's cool. That's cool. Awesome videos. All right, and guys, uh, we're getting very near the end of the show, man. Oh, oh man. you know it, it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Pero queremos aprovechar. Queremos aprovechar ahora. Uh, you know, support your local musicians. We always say this: support your local musicians. You know, during these times. Uh, you know, buy their records, buy their albums, download their music on iTunes, Amazon. Uh, we have a new merchandising store, you know, cool, a lot of cool stuff. I've seen a, a lot of pictures of people that have bought, you know, many fans have bought, you know, T-shirts and have bought uh, stickers and bags and stuff like that. And uh, they have been posting the pictures and they look great. So, yes. you know, look it up. It's jukeboxbeatles.redbubble.com. Again, jukeboxbeatles dot redbubble.com and I'm gonna show you the social links social media links of the band so you can follow us you know stay uh, informed of you know what, what are we doing what are we gonna do así que si me puedes poner la gráfica de los social media links la banda para que todo el mundo los vea nos sigan a través de Facebook nos sigan a través de Instagram nos sigan a través de YouTube vean los videos y así se conectan con nosotros y están este enterado de lo que sucede, de lo que estamos haciendo, de lo que estamos por hacer. Look for that logo. That's the official logo. Jukebox Beatles Tribute. Here it is. Facebook, Jukebox Beatles Tribute. Twitter, Jukebox PR. PR stands for Puerto Rico. Instagram, Jukebox Beatles Tribute. And LinkedIn.com slash IN slash The Jukebox. And we also have a YouTube channel. Just look for uh, Jukebox Beatles Tribute. And, you know, a bunch of videos. I mean, from way back. So it's a lot of fun and uh, yeah, man. It's been another great show. Beetle Mania Ooh. XL. We had uh, how many today? Like 300,000 views? I, I think I saw 400,000. Uh, 400,000? 400,000? 400, yeah, yeah, 400 man. something. So 400. That, that, yeah, that's, that's awesome, that's man. That's great. So, so thank you once again. Muchas gracias por su sintonía siempre. Uh, if you guys are out there, we're going to be here doing this. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, guys, any final words? Uh, I don't know. Um, well, thank you everybody for being here. Uh, Four hundred thousand people that came here. I I don't know. I don't think I I have met four hundred thousand people in my life. So it's cool <laughs> through technology to be communicating with so many people. You know, at the same time. So once again, thank you. So yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, keep safe. Keep entertained. Uh, keep watching the jukebox and keep listening to the Beatles. Yes. Uh, we thank you all for coming back, all the all all the new ones, all the old ones, and please be be coming back because if you come back, we'll we'll come back every single time. So we we love you all, please, yes. and uh, let's keep on. Yellow submarine, the big winner. Yeah.